That, we understand there was a, a walkout, a protest by some of the teams who are against um, the race radios. That's true. Uh, it was the last point on the last point on the on the agenda today, and uh, some teams didn't want to hear what was being presented to them and and walked out, led by Johan Brunil. So it's, it doesn't surprise me. But I believe close mind if it completely close mind to anybody else's opinion. If it's not their opinion, they don't accept it. And, you know, they want to veto every every decision that's made in relation to it. So. So be it. But it seems the decision has been made and there's no way of it being changed. The decision changed. has been made. The decision has been made. I mean, the UCI is prepared to, to and we, we've spoken with companies and I've said it many times, we're prepared to, to work in relation to any aspect of communication which can help safety if it's needed and can be utilised for safety because they're putting forward a safety argument, um, which I don't believe is, is really truthfully the case. But what the UCI will not accept in the future is direct communication from team directors, two riders on the road. But it seems it's kicked off a war of words and a power struggle again. I mean, there's already a communique from the AIGCP. Um, it's like the news we've heard about an exchange of emails between yourself and Jonathan Vortis today, which were very strongly worded. Where it seems the cycle is a war with itself. They were because the agenda for this meeting was sent out on the 1st of April. And yesterday afternoon, he comes with a demand for a change of, of, of the agenda. You know, and you, you can't operate like that. And if they're going to operate like that, not alone that, does he come with the demand? He doesn't even turn up for the meeting himself. So I mean, that's not the way to operate. And uh, you know, we we had the, the, the meeting planned, and there were people told to be here at four o'clock to do their presentation, and so we couldn't change anything. And so he he, he thinks this, you know, the UCI just been belligerent mm -hmm. towards him. But I mean, but they I need to understand. They need to understand too. To, to organise meetings like this takes a lot of time and takes a lot of uh, a lot of effort from the staff, etc. And people have to be told to be here certain times to do presentations, etc., etc. And you can't just at the last minute, when they've had the agenda for already for over two weeks, demand a change. Didn't they ask for like an independent commission to look at the whole radio problem and perhaps come no, they, yeah, they put to mediate? Yeah, but they, yeah. they didn't ask for a, they didn't ask for a, 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 a response to that by email. They said that they were going to bring that up during the meeting today. Right. But then they walked they walked out and they never brought anything up during the meeting today. But obviously this is not just about race radios, it's about power and influence and power. control. It's not, nothing to do with power. It may be to do with power. If it's just to do with power, it's 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 on there, it's their problem. Because they, they then therefore are you know don't realise what their place is. And, and in this sport, as in most other international sports, you have an international authority, the international federation, which is the government and the govern and has the governance of the sport and regulates the sport. You have organisers in our sport who organise events, and you have teams in our sport who have riders who ride races. And I think what's going on here is that the teams, um, you know, want to, to, to take other roles. They want to be in, in roles of governance as well. And you're not, you're not good that. at that? No? no, they can't do that. No, it doesn't happen anywhere. But it happens when in other FIFA, sports. When FIFA changed the offside rule about six, seven, eight years ago, they didn't ask the teams. They did it because they felt it was good for football. But the no, Premier League in the UK it runs we've itself. They, you know, they decide on, on TV rights and how they share the money. Yeah, TV and it works on, under, under UEFA yeah, and FIFA rules. And FIFA rules yeah. There's not a risk yeah. of that happening in cycling? No there's no, 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 there's no risk that this going to happen in cycling. I mean, the, the calendar is, is driven by the UCI, organised by the UCI. It will, it will remain like that. But what happens, say, if the major race organisers went with the teams? I don't, I don't want to talk about hypothetical situations. I deal with facts, and the facts are that at the moment, um, the, the major organisers are on the calendar of the UCI, and I don't see that changing. It seems like it's been I another deal with facts, not hypothetical situations. It seems like it's been another bad day for the sport, though, in for the running of the sport. Yeah. It's been a bad day. No, it hasn't. We've had a very good meeting here today. All day, a very constructive meeting. There was a lot, a lot of good things said all, all day long, and a lot of information was passed over to the, to the to the teams as well. Information which they claimed that they haven't been getting. And once again, the UCI was there to give, it, give them the information. The reason the teams haven't been getting it is because the team, the team members responsible, who should have been passing it on to their members, weren't doing that, right. weren't doing their work. So, no, we, we've had a very good meeting. And other than the, you know, those guys walking out at the end, which, you know, I, I think is quite ignorant on their part, to be honest with you. And um, it, it, it wasn't a big surprise to me. Other, other than that, it was a very good day's work. Okay, thank you. Thanks, sir.